Orbis International has been working since 1982 to improve eye care for the 89% of visually impaired people who live in low- and middle-income countries. The nonprofit organization launched its third-generation Flying Eye Hospital in 2016 to train local surgeons to better care for their patients while promoting eye care and global health. Donated by FedEx, Orbis's MD-10 has been gutted and refurbished with all the equipment needed to train local teams and complete eye exams and surgeries. There's roughly 253 million people in the world that are visually impaired. 36 million of those are uh, blind, of which 75% of those don't have to be if you have the proper training, education, and the skills. And that's really what we're about. We're about sort of the philosophy of teach a man how to fish. So we go in, and then when we leave, they get to continue those work. So that's primarily what Orbis is about, and this plane is a teaching hospital. We're standing here in the classroom. This is the area that probably most people would look at and think that it's a passenger area where we would just haul passengers around. Well, it's actually, it does double as uh, transporting our staff around, but its primary purpose is if you look up in the corners of the room, you have some cameras. It's actually a lecture hall. The classroom is used for live interactive education and training. So uh, the TV is a 3D television. It's connected to the microscope. So the students that would sit here see exactly what they would see looking through the microscope. They can communicate with the surgeon. The surgeon can communicate with them. We're about to enter the hospital area here. You can see on the floor there's actually a ramp leading up. The reason there's a ramp here is because the actual hospital is considered freight. It's not part of the plane here. So we actually have to elevate ourselves, walk up through the doorway here that's actually a 9G barrier. The hospital consists of nine modules in the upper deck here. This is, we're in the first module behind the rigid barrier here. Our access, our normal access for the actual hospital is so this, this door here, to what we call two left, it was added in the modification so we could have an entrance to the hospital. Right across from the entrance is our admin room. Uh, we again have to have admin people, finance people, logistics staff, uh, and Solomon's our logistics guy. We also have access down here, which is sort of neat. Uh, our aircraft mechanics and our biomedical engineers live down there and they can monitor the whole hospital from downstairs and their toolboxes are down there, spare parts and so on. The second area here is the uh, AVIT room. So we have our own audiovisual technician who runs all the cameras throughout the airplane, tapes all the lectures and surgeries so we can pass that off to students with a flash drive. We have an uh, IT technician here. We have our own servers, our own Wi-Fi, basically anything you'd have in a building and to operate a hospital. This is the utility area that's also found in pallet number two. Most people would, uh, if, if you're in the aviation industry, you would never see something like this in an airplane. But the reason you see this like that in this airplane is because, it, remember I told you it was freight. We completely disconnect the hospital from the airplane and this stuff is nothing but weight sitting in here. So it's actually freight. Again, only use them on ground, never used in flight. Uh, and that was one way to uh, put the hospital in there and not have the expense of the engineering of making it aircraft certified. We just entered now module number three. Three and four actually is split in both this room. Uh, this is what we consider to be our laser room. Uh, you have the lead line uh, window coverings. We have a lead line uh, curtain in here to any time we're using lasers to make sure they don't get outside the confines of the room. It's also used for a holding area for the patients before they go back into the surgery. It's also a visual acuity room where we're going to check your eyesight. We have a simulator over in the corner. Much like in the aviation industry, we have level four simulators where we can go through and learn how to fly the airplane without actually ever flying it. And even in some cases, as we know, we can get certified as a pilot in a simulator. Much like that is we have a simulator that can test the skills for doing some of the eye surgery techniques and to run a microscope. Recently, UTC Aerospace contributed $1 million to further develop the hospital's mobile simulation center. Here we're standing in the operating theater. Uh, we're on midway throughout the, uh, the aircraft. You'll see, of course, the microscope here. We've got a little teddy bear that we got mic'd up here. But much like the real surgeon, you know, if you notice, he's got a mic, can talk to those in the front and they can also talk to him or her on what we're doing surgery-wise. You'll notice there's two viewing ports, again for training, and then up here there's a monitor. So you could have a, uh, a trainee here, you could have trainees here looking at the surgery as well, because that's connected to the microscope through this camera as well. 
They can pass uh, dirty instruments from the OR through this passageway here. A technician would go in here and clean it, go through a washer. It would then pass over into the clean area on the other side, go through to the last phase with an autoclave, come out through another two-way pass system back to the OR, completely sterile. We're back and now the eighth and ninth module, the last uh, two modules in the uh, hospital area called the recovery room. So you see we're set up actually for three beds. The third bed is actually in the OR. So we actually use the gurney to transport up as the operating table up in the OR. But when they come back, everybody starts here and finishes here. You can see all the monitoring. We have all the oxygen systems, the heart rate machines. We have the crash cart in case something was to go wrong in the surgery. So it is completely set up as a recovery area. Uh, everybody walks on, walks off basically. So you stay here until you come out of anesthesia and you feel good enough to leave. Some of the stuff you see here in the background, there's nine pieces of ground equipment that have to be offloaded and carried on the airplane to operate that hospital. So we got three generator uh, GPUs, ground power units. We got an air conditioner, liquid cooling system, medgad pallet, hose reels, and all that, those generators actually connect. You'll see a, a fuel line running up to our uh, single point refueling. So we have pull the defuel valve, turn a transfer pump on, and we run jet fuel down to our ground equipment. So other than the needing the stairs and a way to get equipment off, we're self-sufficient. Okay, we're down in the forward uh, cargo hold of the aircraft. We have our toolboxes down here, uh, spare parts for the aircraft, and also there are also three pallets down here that are part of the hospital. Everything from the ground equipment comes up, as you see here, goes into this system here and then runs up into the hospital. When we go to fly, again, because it's, the hospital is not part of the plane and it's not certified, it all has to get disconnected, shut off, fire barrier put in here and then we're ready for flight. Here you are in the forward section of that uh, forward cargo compartment we were talking about. This is the other two pallets that are down here. This one is the med gas pallet. This is our biomedical uh, engineer here, uh, James. And this is the aircraft maintenance module. And again, between these two stations, whether it's the medical side or the aircraft side, we can monitor the hospital and the aircraft all from within this station down here. And of course, if something's needed, we have a telephone right there that the nurse, the doctor, uh, the aircraft people upstairs can give us a call and ask us to come up and fix something. So the toolboxes, all those supplies and consumable items are held down in the aft section of the cargo compartment here. Orbis has trained approximately 40,000 doctors so far and is currently involved in 61 projects in 18 countries, including Peru, Cameroon, Ethiopia, and China.